Welcome back to A320 Knowledge, your trusted source for Airbus expertise. Today, we're diving into part four of our masterclass on low visibility operations. In today's tutorial, we'll explore the following. The critical planning steps for LVPs, including verifying aircraft serviceability, ATC clearance, and RVR conditions. How visual references change across approach categories with specific focus on RVR and lighting requirements for category one to category three approaches and what to do when visual reference is lost after decision height, and how to handle reversion to a lower category approach or go around procedures. If conditions are expected to fall below category one minima at the departure or destination aerodrome, thorough planning is crucial. This involves confirming aircraft serviceability, contacting operations for any known issues, checking for potential delays or slot restrictions, and reviewing any aircraft defects. Both crew members must be trained and qualified to operate under LVPs. The commander should also consider any limitations on approach minima that could affect upcoming operations. Company protocols may designate who is authorized to perform takeoffs in RVR conditions below 400 meters, with some requiring the captain to take responsibility. Crew members must carefully review NOTAMs for issues like standby transmitter failures or runway lighting outages that could affect operations. They should also verify the status of necessary airfield equipment and understand how this may impact landing minima, including those for LVPs. Weather conditions at the departure, destination, and alternate aerodromes must be checked as well. The commander should make informed decisions on departure fuel requirements, taking into account potential delays at both departure and destination. Lastly, briefings must be precise, covering LVP taxi routes, holding points, and airfield-specific requirements to ensure smooth and safe operations. When planning taxi routes, especially when moving from the stand to CAT-2 and CAT-3 holding points, it's vital to proceed with caution. Keeping a sharp lookout is necessary, and certain checks or reviews may need to be postponed until reaching the holding point. Taxi speeds should be kept below 10 knots, around 5 meters per second, providing a 30-second view over 150 meters of RVR. Never cross stop bars without clearance from ATC and always verify if in doubt. Crews must remain alert to ATC clearance limits and be mindful of any signs at holding points. Your transponder may need to be activated for surface movement radar, which helps identify your call sign. Be prepared for non-standard taxi instructions and traffic updates, as different airports have their own specific rules. A takeoff ban is enforced under certain conditions, including when the reported RVR is below the required minimum for takeoff, visibility is insufficient from the flight deck, or the cloud ceiling falls below the specified limits. For example, with RVR values of 125, 100, and 150 meters, takeoff is prohibited unless the minimum RVR of 125 meters is met across all three sections, in addition to meeting other airfield-specific requirements. If the touchdown zone RVR is missing, but the midpoint is 125 meters and the stop end is 150 meters, can you still take off? If the touchdown zone transmissometer is inoperative, the touchdown zone RVR may be replaced by a pilot assessment. Before initiating an approach, verify that both the airfield and the aircraft are in full working order. Airfield equipment requirements are detailed in your company manuals, such as the OMA or QRH. It's essential to carefully review this information beforehand to ensure clarity on when an approach can safely begin or proceed. In addition to approach ban criteria, crews must be aware of other factors that could prevent an approach, such as the number of approaches already conducted at a specific aerodrome. Transmissometers provide RVR data for zones like touchdown, 
midpoint, and stop end, often labeled with letter designations, e.g. A, B, C, which should be cross-referenced with the aerodrome chart, as these zones remain consistent across different runways. Some longer runways or routes may use multiple transmissometers. For an approach, the controlling RVR is always the touchdown zone if it's reported, and the midpoint and stop end RVRs, when applicable, also take precedence. The midpoint RVR is usually 125 meters, but can be reduced to 75 meters if the aircraft is equipped with rollout guidance. The stop end RVR must always be at least 75 meters for all approaches. These RVRs apply to the section of the runway used during the high speed landing phase, down to about 60 knots. The visual references required for each category of approach differ significantly. For a category one approach, along with non-precision and APV approaches, at decision height, at least one of the following visual cues must be clearly visible and identifiable. Center line of the approach lights, part of the touchdown zone, runway centerline lights, or some runway edge lights. For a category two approach, the visibility and maintenance of three consecutive lights are needed, with any combination of the following acceptable. Center line of the approach lights, some of the touchdown zone, runway centerline lights, or part of the runway edge lights. Additionally, the visual reference must also include a lateral ground element, such as an approach lighting crossbar, landing threshold, or touchdown zone barrette. In a category three approach, three consecutive lights must be visible and maintained. For a category three A approach, three consecutive lights must be visible and maintained with a combination of the center line of the approach lights, part of the touchdown zone, runway center line lights, or some of the runway edge lights. However, no lateral element is required for a category 3A approach. A category 3B approach with a decision height requires at least one visible and maintained center line light until touchdown. Conversely, a category 3B approach with no decision height has no specific visual reference requirements. If visual reference is lost after the decision to land has been made, the captain should execute a go-around, bearing in mind that the aircraft's main wheels may touch the runway during this maneuver. If a system failure occurs and the aircraft is limited to a lower category approach, such as moving from category 3B to 3A, the crew can revert as long as the minimum RVR for the new category is met. When conducting an LVO approach, crews must also consider specific factors like missed approach climb gradients, adjustments for auto land and auto brake settings, and differences in crosswind and tailwind limits compared to a normal approach. Key briefing items for LVO include RVR minimums, available approach categories, reversion options, necessary visual references, equipment failure protocols, and expected taxi routing. These elements should be tailored to the specific circumstances of the approach with any other potential threats discussed during the briefing. Our popular A320 tech quizzes are now part of an exclusive newsletter membership designed to provide you with even more value. As a member, you'll receive four brand new A320 tech quizzes every month, one each Monday, delivered straight to your inbox. You'll also receive exclusive deep dives into A320 systems, procedures, and techniques that go beyond this YouTube content. And you'll also gain access to bonus content and other surprises to keep your knowledge fresh and up to date. If you're interested, Click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to sign up today. Thanks for tuning in, and let's take your A320 knowledge to the next level.